Hey everyone, welcome to today's Nursing Rapid Review, where we are mastering NCLEX style questions with Picmonic. My name is Marley, and really fast before we get started, Picmonic is an audiovisual learning tool that helps you remember all the information you need to know in nursing school fast. So today we are going to be covering alcohol awareness because it is Alcohol Awareness Month, and with many of us in quarantine, this is going to be a very big topic for the healthcare providers to be uh, aware of. So let's start out with a question that you would see on a nursing exam or on an NCLEX style prep question. A 45 year old woman, a 45 year old toothless woman shows up to an, the emergency department causing a lot of commotion, screaming that she's the tooth fairy and is coming to collect teeth from patients. She appears confused, has an unsteady gait and cannot recall her name. There's a strong smell of alcohol in her breath. She's diagnosed with Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome. This syndrome is most likely due to which of the following? One, iron deficiency. Two, thymine deficiency. Three, oxygen deficiency. Four, niacin toxicity. Or five, vitamin B1 toxicity. So when approaching this kind of question, you want to first read the question, take a breath, and then reread the entire question and ask yourself, what is the question asking you? So right now I'm looking at this and I'm saying, okay, it's asking me a content-based question. It's asking me if I know what Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome is. So let's step into the Picmonic covering Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome. For alcohol abuse assessment, remember the story of the alcoholic martini and the assess man waking up in jail after a night of partying. Alcohol intoxication involves CNS depression, shown by the deflating CNS brain being held up. CNS depression can cause alterations in the neurologic, respiratory, and cardiac status of the patient, leading to troubles with speech, judgment, and muscle coordination. Withdrawal symptoms can begin as early as two hours after the last drink, and can range from mild anxiety and shakiness to severe symptoms such as seizures and delirium tremens, also known as DTs. With alcohol withdrawal, it's possible to develop Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome, shown by the worm Mickey and corset cop. This syndrome typically occurs due to deficient thiamine levels secondary to alcohol abuse and can produce vision changes, memory impairment, and dementia. Moving along to medical complications, alcohol abuse can produce GI distress, shown by the GI flare gun, due to irritation of the stomach lining. Chronic abuse can wear down the heart muscle and induce cardiomyopathy, shown by the heart mayo with party hat. And because alcohol also irritates the stomach, liver, and pancreas, it is one of the most common causes of acute pancreatitis, shown by the pancreas on fire. It's metabolized slowly in the liver, thus enhancing injury of the liver, leading to liver inflammation, referred to as hepatitis, and scarring of the liver, known as cirrhosis, shown by the sea roses on the liver. Immunosuppression, depicted as the moon suppressed, can also occur due to impaired nutrition. Lastly, Sexual dysfunction may occur in both women and men who engage in alcohol abuse, shown by the limp wiener. Men may experience erectile dysfunction, and women may experience interruptions in menstruation. Remember that several screening tools, including the audit and cage, exist to help in the assessment of alcohol abuse, shown by the screen door the martini is trying to slip out of. So in short, Alcohol abuse results in CNS depression, with withdrawal possibly leading to Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome. Medical complications include GI distress, cardiomyopathy, pancreatitis, cirrhosis, immunosuppression, and sexual dysfunction. And several screening tools exist to help during assessment. So when we jump into the Picmonic, you're going to see a fact list on the left-hand side. Now these facts are the important key points about this topic, about this particular topic that you're more likely to be tested on uh, for your nursing exams or for the NCLEX. And then in the center of the screen you see an image. So each fact on the fact list corresponds with the character in the main image which makes up the entire scene. So let's scroll down on the fact list to withdrawal where we see Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome. And here you're going to see the character, the worm Mickey character, and the corset cop. And so this is often seen a lot of times in alcohol withdrawal. And basically this is, this can have a range of symptoms ranging from mild confusion, anxiety, all the way to dementia, um, memory impairment, 
vision changes similar to the, to the things that the woman in our question was presenting with in the emergency department. So this is due to a thymine deficiency, and you can read that in the definition in this fact. It's due to a thymine deficiency that is secondary to alcohol abuse. So that's something you're going to want to remember for your nursing exams. Now, if you keep scrolling down, you see the other facts in this fact list. You see medical complications, GI distress, pancreatitis, immunosuppression, and all of these have characters associated with it. So when you listen to this picmonic and you study it, you'll just be able to remember the entire image because of all the crazy characters and the crazy story that goes with it. And on a question like this, you'll be able to pull up that picmonic in your memory and recall the information that you need to know. So let's continue on jumping back. And I want you to remember that uh, in a lot of these questions, we use the nursing process to ask ourselves what the question is asking us and find the answer just using ADPI, which is Assessment, Diagnosis, Planning, Implementation, and Evaluation. If many of you remember, it is the nursing process. So a lot of these questions are going to be asking us part of the nursing process. So let's jump down into another question. A 35-year-old alcoholic patient is on the unit and experiencing withdrawals. What is the nurse's next priority action? So the answer options here are administered ordered naltrexone, administer ordered flumazenil, administer N-acetylcysteine, or place the patient in an open space with many people around for safety. Now let's ask ourselves, what is this question asking us? Is it asking us to do an assessment? Is it asking us to create a nursing plan? No, it's asking us to do an intervention. And how do I know that? Because I'm looking at this last sentence, what is the nurse's next priority action? And I want you to remember that, that those keywords, next priority action, because that's going to be triggering me to remember or think about that it's an intervention question. It's not an assessment question. So because of that, I need to know my alcohol interventions. And let's go ahead and look at the alcohol abuse interventions picmonic to help us remember some of this. Having knowledge of the appropriate treatment to carry out in a patient undergoing alcohol abuse can be recalled by the story of the alcoholic martini hitting rock bottom and wanting to change his ways. There are several interventions to implement during the withdrawal stage. This includes reducing environmental stimuli shown by the down arrow over the stimulating environment. Anti-anxiety medications may also be indicated, shown by the anti with anxiety bag along with vitamin supplements, shown by the Vikings. Severe withdrawal may require seizure precautions to be implemented to prevent aspiration, shown by Caesar with a precaution sign in hand. And because alcohol abuse increases the risk for suicide, it may be necessary to implement suicide precautions, shown by the suicide jumper with precaution sign. It wasn't his fault, though, because the fever beaver pushed him, signifying that a patient with severe withdrawal may present with a fever greater than 101 degrees Fahrenheit. An important part of care is to identify support systems, shown by the magnifying glass over the supportive friends. Group therapy can also be helpful, shown by the group therapeutically massaging the martini. The medication desulfiram can also be prescribed in conjunction with therapy and support and is shown by the dyed shirt surfer. This medication works by creating an unpleasant reaction when alcohol is consumed, which helps reduce the desire to drink while the drug naltrexone, shown by the long nail T-Rex, is an opioid antagonist and can also be used in the treatment of alcohol dependence. So in summary, interventions for alcohol abuse during withdrawal include reducing environmental stimuli, giving anti-anxiety medications and vitamin supplements, implementing seizure and suicide precautions, and assessing for and treating a fever. It will be helpful to identify support systems, engage in group therapy, and possibly administer dalsulfiram or naltrexone. So when I pull up the alcohol abuse interventions picmonic, again, I'm going to see the fact list on the left-hand side. And remember, each of these facts corresponds with a character in the main image. And a lot of these characters we're going to see over and over again because they reoccur in the picmonic library to help you remember um, the different symptoms and associations so you can tie it all together. 
So again, we have our alcohol, alcoholic martini, the abused alcoholic martini. Um, if you remember from the last Pikmonic, that character was in our alcohol abuse assessment Pikmonic. And then let's scroll down again to withdrawal. So one of the key points here is that you're going to want to reduce environmental stimuli. So you're not going to want to place the patient in a crowded room with a lot of people. It's going to cause a lot of anxiety. Um, they need to be in a quiet room with limited amount of people, limited amount of stimuli. So automatically I can cross off that last answer option on my list. The one that said put the patient in a room with a lot of people. No, that is a big no. So then we scroll down, we see different options here, seizure precautions, suicide precautions. These are all really, really important things to know. And then a consideration. Let's look down at this naltrexone character, the nail T-Rex. So naltrexone is a medication that's indicated for alcohol and opioid dependence. So remember that naltrexone, the nail T-Rex, if you see in the Pikmonic on the left-hand side, that nail T-Rex character, that's gonna trigger you to think about this answer option, which was, let's go back, uh, administer ordered naltrexone. So you're gonna be thinking about that. That is a big one for um, the NCLEX. It's a big hotspot that you wanna be aware of. So let's go back to the basics. When answering these NCLEX style questions, you wanna ask yourself, what is the question asking me? Remember, think about ADPI, the nursing process. Is it asking me an assessment question? Is it asking me an intervention question? How am I supposed to know these things? So reread the entire question and then look for some keywords like we just did. So assessment questions are going to typically, not always, but a lot of times they're going to have question or um, keywords in there that say things like assess, collect, determine, gather information. These are things that are going to start to make you think, oh, it's asking me to assess the patient, not to have an intervention, but just to gather information. And then an intervention question, just like the one we just had, are gonna have keywords like action, next, intervene, intervention, implement. These are gonna be things that will make you automatically think, okay, what's the action here? What do I need to do? It's not asking me to do any more assessments, it's asking me to intervene, and what are those interventions? So that is all we have for today. Thank you so much for watching and good luck with all your exams and hope everyone is staying safe out there. See you next time.